<clears throat> All right, what up, what up, y'all? Uh, it's your boy Pack Roll, aka Perez Young from the Rumble Room. <clears throat> it's been a minute. <clears throat> Yeah, I've been away for a minute, um, but uh, yeah, my family was moving. My family was moving, so <clears throat> we're in a new city. We're in uh, San Mertadino. San Mertadino is murder. San Bernardino. <laughs> Yeah, so for those who don't know San Bernardino, there's not much happening out here. There's not much happening in San Bernardino. <clears throat> San Bernardino is mountains. It's like if you take if you take an any any neighborhood out of like South Los Angeles and you put it in the middle of a field with some mountains in the background. That's San Bernardino. And it's, it's very confusing. It's like San, Bern San Bernardino could be kind of deceptive. <clears throat> because there's all this beautiful backdrop. And all this beautiful like scenery like above like tree level. And then beneath it, it's like... A bunch of drug addicts and drug dealers. <laughs> it's sad, but it's it's kind of it's it's kind of confusing that way. It's kind of it's kind of uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's 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 weird. San Bernardino's weird. It's beautiful. It's got like two sides to it. Because <clears throat> like you have you have these you have these mountains in the you know. You have these blue blue skies, you know, California blue skies, kind of a standard. You got the you got the sun, you know, warm weather. Palm trees, you know, is, is a standard for for California. Palm trees in every neighborhood. You got the beautiful mountain backdrop, but then as you're Eyes descend to street level. You see the meth attic lurching about 10 yards down the street. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of it's kind of crazy that way. It's kind of crazy. Anyway. <clears throat> so so we're back on um today uh I wanted to uh recap the uh the conversation that I had with uh the live discussion that I had with um Cherry Cherry Love and Mike Pereira I was I was invited into Cherry Love's show to speak with uh the one and only faithful to God. But, uh, I don't know, man. This guy, faithful to God. Okay. I call him Mike Pereira. Many, many, many call him Mike Pereira. And, uh, wow. I mean, does, does that guy do coke? I'm pretty sure that guy is on anxiety meds. I mean, if you guys heard the 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 recap and the way he banters on in angst like a fretting adolescent girl who's misplaced her lip gloss. Maybe we should call him Percocet Pereira. Pill popping Pereira. Faithful to fentanyl. <laughs> or 
Or maybe just Cocaine Mike. He's Cocaine Mike on Fridays and Saturdays. I could hardly get a word in edgewise. <laughs> hardly get a word. It says something, right? Let's talk about anxiety. Let's talk about fear. Let's talk about how Mike Pereira radiates it. Hmm? Someone who is anxious is unbalanced. Anxious, anxious people fear what they can't control. The future. And when we're anxious about the future, we risk moving too early. Jumping the gun. We're quick on the trigger. Sometime before I called in, a brother by the name of Shannon Ben Israel called in. He's a member of the Rumble Room. But his Zoom account's name is uh, something that begins with like a P. Kind of like my name. When he called in, you could, uh, you could immediately hear the suspicion and apprehension in Cherry Love's. <laughs> and it didn't make sense until about halfway through their conversation at the uh, two hour, 22 minute and 50, 50 second mark to be exact. Mike Pereira asks, is this Pacrisino by any chance? Hesitating, probably due to confusion from the, uh, the random question, Brother Shannon hesitantly responds, no. And why wouldn't he? <clears throat> why wouldn't he be confused? Could you imagine calling in to a show anticipating a sensible conversation and being shouted down all throughout the dialogue. And then to, I mean, just to endure all of that. Go see it yourself. All throughout the interview, they shouted him down, talked over. And then to, mistake, to be mistaken for another person. <laughs> How completely and absolutely confusing and disorienting that would be, right? But anxious people spread their confusion, don't they? In an attempt to justify his inquiry, Pereira divulges, because you sound like him. Because you sound like him. Now, I don't know if it arrived to Mike Pereira, the creep factor of being able to recognize the voice of a man who he, up until now, deliberately avoids on comment boards. One who he's kicked out of a group that he moderates, Vocab's group. <clears throat> then Mike, he quickly follows up with, this actually sounds like something he would argue <laughs> from because you sound like him to uh, this actually sounds like something he would argue. So whether Mike Pereira is capable of recognizing the sound of my voice, Pagrisino Lee, or rather that he is so familiar with all of my arguments that he is 
able to make calculated speculations on what I would argue, he's just made an admission. He knows me more than I, Pakistan Ali, realized. My goodness. Well, wouldn't that be a deep, dark alley to walk through? How much does Mike Pereira know about me? Apparently, he recognizes the sound of my voice. Apparently, he can spot out what I would argue. You know how well you have to know somebody's arguments and positions to be able to speculate what they would argue? That means you have to have gone through so many arguments of that person to where you can make generalizations. Okay, this is what he does. This is what he does. You have to become familiar with an individual in order to say what they would and wouldn't argue. Wow. Wow. I'm just going to move on from that. Oh, and by the way, the very one-sided conversation between uh, Brother Shannon and Mike Pereira ended with Brother Shannon hanging up while he was on mute. He never came back. (laughs) They frustrated the poor brother. He, He just hung up the phone. And how do we know this? He he came onto he was on the Rumble Room platform talking about it. Because while he was talking with them, they were trying to they were talk they were talking trying to get hold of me on the on the comment boards to uh, to call into the show. <clears throat> when we fear, we angst, and anxiety leads to obsession about what we can't control so we obsess over it in order to conjure up listen very closely ways to control it when we obsess over the unknown okay we conjure up ways to control it And when we leak our anxiety, we jitter because we are restless and say wrong things at the wrong time. Isn't that right? One second. One second. One second. I have Brian here. Yeah, no problem. You need Brian. No problem. Hey. Thanks, guys, for hanging with me. <clears throat> An unexpected entrance. <clears throat> Give me one second. So, <clears throat> so our our anxiety leads us to imbalance. Okay, and when we're not balanced, we jitter. 
we exude an arrhythmia or lack of rhythm, a, a disharmony. When someone has a uh, when someone has a heartbeat arrhythmia, their heart beats dissynchronously. It's out of rhythm. It's not harmonious. <clears throat> but when we're sound, when we're balanced, when we're in control, when we're ready, when we're centered. There's a sort of grace and a harmony with the way we do things. A public speaker, even a Christian apologist like Mike Pereira, ought to exude control and balance. But what do we hear during our interaction? Jittery cadence, unnecessary carrying on after asking a question. You would ask me a question and throw two, three more to- thoughts on top of it. You know, he did it to Shannon too. You know, it's like by the by the time he's finished, we're wondering. You know what the question was? It's like, can you can you repeat that question? <laughs> it's just. I don't remember what you asked because you threw three more thoughts on top of it. What else? An obsession with constantly filling as much of the airway with his voice as possible. Even to the point of sacrificing grace. It's like he, you know, people like that can't get enough voice time in. Anxious people have to talk. There was a uh, <clears throat> a trainer. He's still around. Uh, one of my one of Mike Tyson's uh, boxing trainers, Teddy Atlas, real famous. He says to Mike Tyson. When you're tense, you move. And, and I think he, he gave this advice to him uh, as a way to sort of help cope with like the uh, stress before a fight. He said, motion releases tension. When you're tense, you move. And it's just a natural thing that we do. When we're tense, we move. Because moving helps relieve tension. Right? Moving, moving helps relieve tension. <clears throat> and, and so it could, be, it could serve to be therapeutic. But at the same time, from the outside looking in, I can tell who's nervous by how much they move. By how much they jitter. Okay? How much they talk. You can tell a nervous person by how much they talk, how much they feel the need to fill the air (laughs) with their voice. It's a type of motion. You're moving in your thoughts. You're expressing thoughts, movement. It It feels therapeutic. It feels good when you're nervous to talk. Some people just can't help it. And so you can tell when somebody's losing a degree of control. And so look at, let's look at the flip side of that. You can tell who's in control by how still they are. By how at peace and centered they are. <clears throat> That's a type of behavior I would expect from a Christian apologist. If you're... Um, constantly competing, your ideas are competing with others, people are challenging you, you're challenging other people, it's emotionally and psychologically challenged, challenging. And so every Christian apologist, every, every public speaker, speaker's challenge is to 
hold their peace, maintain center and balance. <clears throat> incessant talking, incessant speaking, constantly feeling the need to share your anxiety with the world. It's a burden. And so charity and reciprocity are regular victims in interactions with Mike Pereira. People know this. And so his reputation precedes him. Perhaps that is why he insisted on being called faithful to God and not Mike Pereira. Does Mike not understand that reinvention and change come from within? Not by mere superficial and topical pseudonym monikers that reflect Virtues we only desire to embody. May we all remain mindful that to be called faithful, faithful to God, is only earned by demonstrating ourselves to be faithful and to insist on the former without ever proving the latter is simply fanciful thinking. Most of all, it is the providence of the Father that proves and calls us faithful to Him. Amen. But overall, it was a pleasure uh, for me to speak with them. Uh, I didn't call in with any hopes to prove any particular arguments. And uh, I imagine that it, if it wasn't for Mike Pereira, it definitely would have been Cherry Love that would have saw to it that I didn't. I mean, you guys can you guys can review it for yourselves. Is well. <laughs> so I I came on basically to shoot the sh shoot the shit and ride the wave, and then I found myself in the hot seat. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, and, and you know, now that I think of it, considering that Mike Pereira had misguessed that. The previous caller was me. In retrospect, if if I didn't know any better, kind of felt like they planned it. Huh? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, I I'm not sure how much they got accomplished, but uh, but at least it was entertaining to me. You know, me and. <clears throat> Me and Mike P. I've only had about three, three interactions. One on October tenth, two thousand and eighteen. I have it posted. You guys, uh, you guys can go go check that out. That that was a riot. It was him and uh, it was basically it was crazy. It was, it was Vocab's group, the group that Vocab Vocab uh, um, that's his administrates. Mike P's a, mod a moderator. I was in there with Eric Haylock. I was just making my rounds on each of the threads. Sharing my sources about, you know, what we stand for. And basically all the, you know, what was interesting. Mike P tried to, uh, he tried to re rehash the con. He tried to have the conversation again. <laughs> he brought up all the same things that he was bringing up on the thread about the, the last rabbi of, of Morocco and Sudan or whatever. The, the the white man with the tan. Go and look at it. I posted it. I posted it yesterday. The hashtag is booted for the truth, and you, you could just find the one with the um, vocabs uh, pics on it. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it was him. He followed me. He followed me from like one thread to another, and we ended up on this one thread. Eric Haylock's bro, bro, Eric Haylock's thread, and it was talking about. Jews of Africa, Mavumbu Jews. And so I, I proceeded to um, put, place some sources, some visuals, screenshots of some text, some maps. And and lo and behold, here comes Mike again. It was like it was like a third time. I was like, oh, wow, it's him again. 
I was like, oh, it's this guy again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I knew he was trouble because I, I, peep, I peeped this whole, like, I was like, who is this guy? So I, I knew he was the, a moderator. So I knew I had to sort of move around him. I just didn't know that he was going to be so undiplomatic as he was. Like, he was really, at that point, I was like, this guy is looking for precedence to, to kick me out of the room. I knew it. I knew it immediately. So I, so I was just like, "F it, let's let, let's go toe to toe." So I started, you know, I, I maintain, um, you know, my my, you know, you you hold your ground. You know, you you try to be as respectful as possible, but then you, you know, as it sort of as people sort of become unreasonable, it's like, okay, well, let me let me leverage a little more. Let me lean on you a little bit more. Let me put more. Let me put more. Uh, more swing in this punch and so we, we it got real spicy about it got real spicy actually real quick at that point because he had been following me i was like a, kind of avoiding him and then this at this point you know if you go through those those photos <laughs> i start to get a little spicy rachel james shows up and you know i'm it's like i'm going back and forth bro haylock is just chilling like he you know he ain't the type to really go back and forth but I, I'll trade. I'll trade for a minute, you know, until I until it's just ridiculous, and then I I give you peace and light. <clears throat> so, you know, you can go see the pictures for yourself. But some of the highlights of it, um, he started trying to make. He tried, to, you know, Mike Pereira. He kind of he had, you know, when people really don't have. An argument with it when they when they when, look put it this way when people have the evidence they give it right like like if I got that work I'm gonna give it to you but you can tell who doesn't really have the work because they try to counterfeit it they try to counterfeit an argument they don't give you the scriptures they give you these this topical logic and they try to fill in the blanks of what they're trying to get accomplished. So that's a lot. A lot of what Mike, Mike did. He he put pictures of 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 these Kazar Jews on on the on the thread, and he was like basically trying to say, "Oh, these are the true Jews of Africa," and so I started to uh, to sort of make fun of them. I'm like, really, really are the you know these are the these are these are the Jews <laughs> of Africa, huh? Like it can't it can't be brown it can't be brown like black people. It's got to be these white people. As if white people could, you know, how many white people do you find in the Congo? How many white people do you find in Nigeria? Ain't no white people in the Congo. Ain't no white people in 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 in, in Nigeria. They they can't handle it. They can't handle it. <laughs> they come down with malaria. They get flus. Did you guys know that before they settled in Palestine, they tried to settle in Uganda? And do you know that the land spit them out? They came down with malaria. They, everybody was getting sick. They had to wrap up shop and they had to bail. They had to get, they had, you know, they can only go down there one by one. And they can only go, they, <laughs> they can only go down there as missionary. They can't, they can't settle. The people just, they die. And and so if you read all these historical accounts, when, when um, the Portuguese settlers, uh, started to resettle in like um, Angola and in West Africa. They had to like people were dying. They had to send master after master to run the plantations, and and the language that's used in John Ogilvy's description of the of the Americas was that they had to condition. They had to con- become conditioned to the environment. White people don't do well in humid, hot environments with lots of sun. They burn. They they steam like vegetables. <clears throat> so so it, it was completely absurd this this argument that the last the Jews were these Khazars that had you know been living in the region. Are you kidding me? So I made a mockery of them all the way through. And then uh, uh, one of the points I made up was like, oh, yeah, well, maybe maybe uh, th- these are the, you know, these these white people that Mike's posting. Maybe these are the people that they saw when they decided to name the land Negresia and Negro land. And I placed maps that's, that that showed that the region was, I mean, you guys have probably seen them. 
you know, Ghana, Guinea-Bissau, uh, uh, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, all that was called, uh, well, all that was actually Guinea, which means black. And just above it in Sudan, right around the Niger, was called Negroland. And depending on the map that you're looking at, you might see Sudan. Now, why is on one map it says Negresia or Negroland, and in, on, on another map it says Sudan? Because Negroland is derived from Negresia, which is, comes from the words negro, all right? And it's the place of negro. When, you, when something is, ends with the ia, España or Brasilia or Colombia or, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, is this is, we're talking about the land of. So when we say Negresia, this is called the land of the blacks. So when the English translates that over to the English from, from Latin or Spanish, from Latin, it's going to render Negro land. Now, what does that have to do with Sudan? Sudan, and this was the point I made to Rachel James. She made such a fool of herself. Matter of fact, somebody tag her. I think I meant to tag her in this. Let me see if I can tag her. Somebody, somebody tag Rachel James. Because <clears throat> I'd be laughing at her. She, get, she gets mad when I, uh, when I repost this little conversation, uh, that, uh, this little interaction with, with Mike Pereira. But what does Sudan have to do with that? Sudan, let's break down the word Sudan. Okay, we in the West, we are disconnected to the etymological um, roots of the word Sudan. Sudan comes from the Arabic language, Arabia, Al Arabia. Okay, <clears throat> Aswud, Aswud is the Arabic word for black. The original name for Sudan is called Bilad Al Sud Al Sudan. Bilad Al Sudan. Sudan, right? So we're talking about the land of the blacks in Arabic. Do you know the fight that Rachel James put up? I mean, these guys, they were like, if you don't prove this, you know, what was what was up there? I had the um that one clip where it says, Tis a vulgar arrow that tis, tis a vulgar error that not all the Jews were black, that some were um, and basically it says some were not as black. Some were only the Portuguese Jews were black or jet black. They were like implying that they were jet black and that the other Jews in the region were like a lighter black, like brown. <clears throat> OK, that was one. And then so so we had Mike arguing Mike and Rachel at, like they were just drilling me with these questions. And, and, like, re look at the clips for yourself. You guys got a tab up. Open that tab, open, <laughs> and, you know, we can go through it together. And then so at, and at the same time, these questions are coming one after, after the next. Then she says, prove that, prove that Sudan means what you, means land of the blacks. <laughs> and, and, you know, like when you have the knowledge, when you, when each of us have the knowledge, we are the treasure. We are the gift. When you have truth. And somebody doesn't. You are the gift, and you can you can regulate how how hard you make another person work to get to the truth that you have, right? It's it's a chess game, right? So I'm dealing with these two. They want me to just shell out the information so that they can sort of question it more. I'm like, well, if you don't, I, I'm confident about what I know, but if you don't know it, you're at the disadvantage. So you go and look it up. Rachel James did some googling. <laughs> she went to uh y'all yeah, gonna make me open this thing up. I got my computer in front. I got my computer in front anyway. I can do it. But basically, um she went to <laughs> Oh my god, let me find this joint. Let me find this shit, man. This was ridiculous. She put such a fight up. This is where she went. This is this was her I'm gonna turn the camera around. I hope you guys can see this good. <laughs> see, at this point, I was, I said this kind of was tab because I realized how 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 stupid they were, you know, 
how stupid they were. Some people, like, you don't have to let people know you're stupid, man. You don't have to let people know how stupid you are. We all have a degree of stupid, but we all sort of show it at different degrees. And those who are smart can know when to, like, turn the volume down button on it. But these two, full blast. Let's go back a few. <laughs> so this was my this was my Carrera's Afri African Jew. <laughs> a white man with a tan. Uh let's let's really show how stupid these guys are. I really hate to do this to you, G Con, because you know you my you my you my guy. <clears throat> okay. So this is when I started breaking down the name Sudan. Like you can see, like this, this shit was just like utterly ridiculous to me. I was just laughing, man. Cause like, I mean, you spit the facts; and th the truth argues for you. You don't need to put any umph behind it. It's all technique, right? Like, like when you throw a punch, when you when you swing a bat and you hit that home run, it's all about you swing the bat. Is you know you swing the bat, but you it's it's about also about balance. Cause you can swing hard and only get a ground ball. It's about that angle that you hit at. It's about the balance of your feet, of where you are in your swing when that ball connects, right? So when you have the truth and your argument is lined up, it's like a knockout punch. It's like a home run hit. And it's all technique. All technique. Look at Mike Pereira. Funny that you mentioned Sudan since I helped compile the article. It's like he's both of himself. You you could you could you could hear you could hear how uh, how insecure the guy. He's always needing validation, you know. In the in the in the in the uh, <clears throat> in the discussion with in, on Cherry Love's channel yesterday, he asked me questions about my ancestors and being able to uh, trace my ancestors. And then I would tell him, and he'd be like, "Oh, well, my my people too." Like, okay, well, what they got to do with me, man? Like, <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so Rachel's busy arguing with me. So the the clip says, "Tis a vulgar era, vulgar era that all Jews are black." So she mis she she repeated the sentence like it said something different. <laughs> like I had it wrong. Pakistani, it literally says tis a vulgar error to say that Jews are all black. I don't know what she she wasn't very clear about about what she uh what she um what point she was trying to make. So those are my responses. What does the rest of it say, Rachel? She didn't read it all. She's looking for the first thing to shut it down. <clears throat> All right. So uh you guys can see this this joint for yourself, man. This, this shit was crazy. So Rachel asks, "Show me a source. Show me your source that says Sudan means that means black. Land of the blacks." Now, I uh, like immediately I know she hasn't done the work. She just doesn't have the knowledge. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna let her go look that up on her own. Like, you can go find that out by your, you can go find that out by yourself. Since you guys are giving me such a hard time, if you don't know anything, you 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 act with grace to the people you're trying to get information from. These people, Rachel and Mike Pereira, they're almost like it's, they're talking to me as if they're entitled to what's in my brain. That's not how it goes. That's not how it goes. So she does her little Google. I did, and literally nothing says that. Yeah. That's when I say, all right, stupid. <laughs> I'll see you later. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> and it's as simple as that, man. Like, it's as simple as that. Like, you don't have to, like, don't waste time with people who, like, these people don't want to know. Like and 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 there and like the whole the disrespect the like the the ingraciousness of of these people like it really you it, it's telling 
it's telling. You can really sort of do the math work and say, okay, how much time is this really worth? What really are the intentions? Is this beneficial? Is, is it beneficial for me to sow my seeds here on this ground? <clears throat> so, <laughs> so at this point, you know, I sort of went through my whole phase where I was like, you're an agent, you know, like, but, um, you, you, so, you sort of learn to sort it out, man. Like, like, you know, as far as my own personal experience, it's like everybody that disagrees with you can't be an agent. And even though there are agents, people are put on FBI payroll. I can vow, I can, I can personally, I personally know that because as a teacher, I received emails from the FBI, this position, that position. And it was like, you know, they, they, it was like curriculum design for the FBI, you know, consult, education consultant for the FBI. I'm like, what does that have to do with the FBI? So P, so they, they cater, you know, thing, positions to bring you in and, 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 and you know, get you to work for the FBI. So it's a reality that there are people who work regular, apparently regular jobs who are on FBI payroll. <clears throat> and so apparently this struck a this struck a chord with 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 Mike Pereira. You know, because uh <laughs> he said he found he found what he needed. He said, I'm an agent, huh? Now you done messed up, right? We have a rule about proving claims in this group and you made a positive one. So because I didn't prove that he was an agent, he kicked me out of the group. <laughs> and here's Alfredo Valentin towing the line. This is why I go so hard on Alfredo Valentin. This is why I go so hard. I don't, I don't spare the rod for Alfredo Valentin. <clears throat> Mr. Toe the Line. All right. Mike Pereira and Alfredo Valentin. You know, you guys remember that book? Uh, you guys remember that book uh, of Mice and Men? George and Lenny? Mike Pereira and Alfredo Valentin are the George and Lenny of Facebook. Hey, George. Hey, George. Where are we going today, George? Anyway. <clears throat> All right. Um, so those are my thoughts on the uh, on the uh, live discussion last night with Mike Pereira, Faithful to God, uh, and Cherry Love. Um, you guys can watch it when you get a chance so you're up to speed on, on, on what I'm talking about. Feel free to run through this little post here. It's comedy. Comedy. Um, but um, but I guess that's that, man. Um, Y'all have a blessed afternoon. Uh, maybe I'll get on tomorrow in the, in the next couple days. Um, but I hope you guys have a blessed evening. And, um, and peace, light, and shalom.